Hi, Karen Dice here, Mortgage Currency, March 2013 edition. It seems as though the agencies have seen their shadows and crawled back into their holes because in the last 30 days there were only a few updates. So we're continuing our mini-series uh, where we're breaking apart the various components of the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau rules. Now, while they don't go into effect till January of 2014, these interpretations and little sound bites are going to help you become prepared when the first of the year hits. Now, you will find part two of the qualified mortgage rule, and this one is about the five tiers of loan amount thresholds. When it comes to points and fees and the maximum commissions that you can make. Now, there are five different loan tiers that you need to watch out for. Over 100,000, 60 to 100, 20 to 60, 12, 5 to 20, and 12, 5 and below. Now, the maximum amount of income that you can earn on each tier are inclusive of fees and points that, you're, that the consumer is going to pay and are not included in your commission. They also go on to state that those maximum commissions uh, will be adjusted every year based on inflation and the consumer price index. So read the article. We've got several examples for you and interpretations of each. Now, part two of the loan officer compensation rule as it relates to the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau defines what an originator is. It basically says anybody who, who uh, quotes rates, points, assists the consumer in filling out a loan application, uh, negotiates loan terms, issues approval letters, are loan originators. So if your processors, assistants, and underwriters do something like this, hey, they're going to have to be licensed. Now, something new that really doesn't affect you, but I wanted you to know about, that if there is seller finance properties, the seller owns the home, and a residential property, and they finance more than four properties in a 12-month time period, they have to be licensed as well. Now, this is where a builder could be considered a loan originator if they're providing financing and financing to home buyers. Construction financing doesn't account. But if they're providing end financing where there's rate and terms, they're holding a mortgage on the property, and they're collecting monthly payments, they're considered a loan originator. You will also find a report from the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau and the FTC regarding the inaccuracies and errors that are, appear on credit bureau reports. I know you've known that. But what we want you to know is the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau realizes that there are issues and there's going to be legislation coming out. It's a great article to read because it's something that you can share with your clients. Okay, a couple updates from FHA. The 2900 form is going to be brand new. It's going to include the new MIP disclosures, but that won't go into effect till June 3rd. In fact, FHA says they're not even going to release the form until that time, so there isn't any mix-up. But just quick update, you need to check with your LOS systems to make sure that they're updating the forms as well. Okay, so we got a strange email from HUD. On March 2nd, they sent an email that says, hey, here's a link to a new total scorecard updates. The link took us to an old scorecard update. So we searched the website. We got on the phone. We called HUD. And the mystery continues because no one knows where to find the March 2nd total score updates. So when we do find it, you're going to get a special email with that information. And there's been nothing from VA in quite a while. And it's probably one of the most stable loan programs out there. So look into VA loans if you haven't done them before. So thank you so much for viewing. And remember, getting a loan approved and closed these days is rocket science.